Okay, so to get our period, um, we know that it's 2 pi on n. Okay, the n value is 2 thirds, so 2 pi over 2 thirds. Okay, flip it upside down and multiply. So we'll get 2 pi times 3 on 2, which will give me 6 pi on 2, which is 3 pi. So there's our period. The range of my graph, well, think, think about our standard sine graph. The range of the graph is just from negative 1 to 1. And then we're just shifting the whole graph up 3 units. So really the minimum value at negative 1 becomes negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. And the next one becomes 1 plus 3, which is 4. So the range is 2 to 4. Okay, so we want to solve, um, find the solutions to the equation. So the first thing we need to do with any trig equation is just to rearrange it so that the trig functions is on the left and the um, what we're solving for is on the right. So let's get cos pi x on 8 is equal to 1 over root 2. So we're about to use cosine positive. Uh, it's going to be in the first and fourth quadrants. Cos of what angle gives me 1 on root 2? Uh, so cos inverse of 1 on root 2 obviously is, or well not obviously, hopefully you know, is pi on 4. So the two angles there are pi on 4 in between, and we're going to start from 0 and work our way around. Now we'll consider that pi on 8 in terms of the period of the graph and how many times we're going to need to go around our unit circle in a minute. First things first, let's try and get ourselves a couple of solutions. So pi x on 8 will equal, so 0 plus pi on 4, which is equal to pi on 4. And then we go all the way around to 2 pi minus pi on 4, which is obviously 7 pi on 4. Now, let's get back to that pi on 8. If we give a little bit of thought to the, what the period is, the period is equal to 2 pi on n, which in this case is 2 pi over pi on 8. So I flip it upside down and multiply, um, and we're going to end up with 16. So that domain of 0 to 20 is just a little bit above one period. So if we do two cycles around the graph, that should more than cover um, all of my solutions. All right. So then if my first two solutions are at pi on 4 and 7 pi on 4, I just need to add 2 pi, which is 8 on 4. Eight on four. So that gives me 9 pi on 4 and 15 pi on 4. Um, Divide both sides by pi, so my pi's cancel, or multiply by 8 first. So we get 8 pi on 4, 7 eighths of 56 pi on 4, 8 nines of 72 pi on 4, and 15 eighths are 120 times pi on 4. Now we can cancel off our pi's and simplify those terms. And so we'll get x is equal to 2, uh, 14. So 72 divided by 4, what's that, 18? And I reckon that's going to be here, but then check 120 over 4 is 30. So there's all four solutions, but obviously 30 is outside the domain. And so 2, 14 and 18 are our solutions. Now, question three. State in words giving scale factors of the transformations required to sketch the graph of. So we're starting with cos x and we're making our way to the graph described. So I guess there's two ways we can approach it. So let's just first consider the different um, things that are happening. The 4 at the front affects my amplitude, so it stretches it from the x-axis. So we're going to dilate by a factor of 4 from the x-axis. The 2 inside is inside the function, a bit like f of 2. So it's going to be a scale factor of a half. So that's going to be dilation from the y-axis by a factor of a half. And then we've got our pi on 3 units shifting it to the right. So we're going to translate uh, by pi on 3 units um, in the posit positive direction or to the right of the graph. All right. Now, alternatively, if you like the whole x dash y dash approach, let's consider, let's rewrite our graph as y on 4 equals cos 2x minus pi on 3. So now we can say that um, the original graph y equals cos x is transformed into my y dash graph, which is y on 4 cos 2x minus pi on 3. So if we equate, we can say that the y is equal y dash on 4, and that my x is equal to 2 times x minus pi on 3. 
or x dash minus pi on 3. So then what we can do is just rearrange. Let's get what y dash is. So y dash is equal to 4y. x dash is equal to divide by 2. So we're going to get x on 2 plus pi on 3. Um, and once we've done that, well, then we've got our x dash and y dash. So my x dash and y dash as a coordinate is x on 2 plus pi on 3, comma 4y. So from there, we can sort of see our transformations really quite clear, clearly as well. My y value is being multiplied by a factor of 4, which equates to my dilation of by 4 from the x-axis. Um, my x value, it's been divided by 2. So that equates to a dilation from the y-axis by a factor of a half. Um, and then my x value has had pi on 3 added to it, which equates to translating pi on 3 to the right of my graph. So both approaches are, are really valid, all right? So whichever method you prefer, that's the one that you use. All right, so now we're looking to sketch this graph. So we want to sketch the graph between negative pi and pi f of x equals. So since we have sort of amplitude change, period change, and a translation, I'm going to look at doing that in two shifts. All right, so let's consider our period first. The period is 2 pi on n, which is 2 pi on 2, which is equal to pi, and the amplitude is just 4. So let's just sketch that graph um, through the points that we've got. All right, so it's a cosine graph. The period is pi, so we're going to get one cycle completely to the right. So the halfway mark at 0.5 pi will be my minimum, and then we're going to go through each of those points there. So let's just sketch that. Just like that. And obviously we're working the same back the other direction. I'll just mark that negative a half negative pi over there, and just go through. All right, so at a minimum, we've shown examiners um, that we understand the impact of a, a period and a um, amplitude change. So I'll just label that section of the graph. So what else is happening now? Everything else is being moved pi on three units to the right. So what we want to do now is try and get all the values into the same denominator. Let's get them all into the same fraction so it's really easy just to shift the graph. Off the top, I'm not too sure what pi on 4 plus pi on 3 is. So if we return pi on 3, well, that's the same as 4 pi on 12. My pi on 4 is going to be 3 pi on 12, isn't it? So if we just put those values in, so... A half is 6 on 12, 3 quarters will be 9 on 12, pi is obviously 12 on 12, negative 3 pi on 12, negative 6 pi on 12. Just to help us make it a bit simpler when we go to shifting everything to the right, um, 4 pi on 12. All right. So now let's just go mark our key points. Let's extend our graph a fraction. Um, so that'll be now at negative 15 on 12. Uh, just to make it a bit easier when we shift everything across to the right. So now we just want to go through and add 3 pi on 12 to each point. All right. So just pick the key points and add 3 pi on 12 to each of the coordinates that we've got. So just with a different colour pen. Um, so the, the y-intercept is going to shift across to... Uh, 4 pi on 12, 3 pi on 12 is going to become 7 pi on 12, 7 pi on 12. Um, 6 pi on 12 at the halfway mark is going to become 10 pi on 12, 9 pi on 12 will become 13 pi on 12. So we're just going to shift everything across 4 pi on 12 units. Go through the left hand side as well. So you know, that negative 6 is going to become negative 2. Uh, the negative 3 we've moved across already. Negative 9 pi on 12 becomes negative 5. Uh, the 12 on 12, negative 12 on 12 is going to become negative 8 on 12. 
and my negative 15 on 12 will become negative 11 on 12, so that'll be a little bit before the end of my domain. So we know it's going to extend down a little bit further. So we've got those key points and now we can just sketch them. So just sketch all those. We can check Y intercepts later. Okay, so just extend that graph back towards the negative direction. And I guess the advantage I've got now is I can just grab my eraser, as you can, no doubt, and just remove the section of the graph that's outside the domain, both at the, the back and the front. And there's just a couple of endpoints there that we need to determine. Right. So it's going to be at pi something, a negative pi something. So if we substitute pi into our equation up there, uh, what are we going to end up with? We're going to end up with, well, at x equal to pi, I'm going to have y equals 4 times cos of 2 times, substitute the pi in. Um, so it'll be 3 on 3 on 3 minus 1 on 3, which is 2 pi on 3, times by 2 is 4 pi on 3, which puts me in the third quadrant where cos is negative. So we get a negative 4 cos pi on 3. Pi on 3, remember, is a half. So I'll end up with negative 2. And that kind of fits in with where we roughly are with all of our graphs, isn't it? That looks about right. Um, the only thing you need to do now, if we go back and check the instructions we've got, sketch the graph, we've ticked that off. Um, Label axis intercepts. So let's label the intercept. So let's work out at negative 2, or sorry, at x equal to 0. We got negative 2, which is what we expected. And to work out our x intercepts, well, they're just the, the red x intercepts shifted along, um, shifted along 4 pi on 12 units to the right. So instead of negative 15 pi on 12, it's going to be negative 11 pi on 12. Instead of negative 9 pi on 12, it's going to be negative 5 pi on 12. So we don't actually have to physically solve the function equal to zero because we know exactly how far across to the right it is. All right? So just make sure you put those coordinates in and we're done. Okay, so to find our general solution, ideally we remember the formula, but otherwise we can probably piece it out. So sine x, okay, positive in here and here. And so if we think about our solutions, are going to be 0 plus an angle, pi minus an angle, 2 pi plus, 
3 pi minus. So you remember how we had that for sine even plus odd minus. So I'm going to have even pi. So in this, our case, 2x is going to be the even pi. So say 2k pi plus sine inverse of 1 on root 2. Or it's going to be the odd pi, 2k plus 1, minus sine inverse of 1 on root 2. Okay? So there's odd minus even plus. So let's see how that takes us. 2k pi plus sine inverse of 1 on root 2 is pi on 4. Or let's expand. 2k pi plus pi minus pi on 4. So I get 2x is equal to so what if we take pi on 4 out the front and that'll give me 8k plus 1 and let's simplify that. I get 2k pi pi minus pi on 4 is 3 pi on 4. So if I take pi on 4 out the front I get, again, 8k, excuse me, I that, plus 3pi. So we get the 8k because 8 divided by 4 gives me the 2 that we were after. Okay, so there's just about my 2s. 2x is equal to that. So x will equal pi on 8 outside of 8k plus 1, or um, pi on 8 8k plus 3. That pi should be there. All right. So there's my two general solutions for my sine function. Okay. What's 5 got for us? Solve the equation for uh, that. So as soon as we see a sine x and a cos x, we know we have to turn it into a tan x. So let's go with sine x on 2 will equal negative 1 on root 3 cos x on 2. Divide by cos, negative 1 on root 3. Oops, let's get rid of that. Over cos x on 2. So they, can so they cancel to give me a tan x on 2 is equal to negative 1 on root 3. All right. So in this case, we've got a domain of x is other than a bar. So in reality, what we're after is our general solution. We haven't been told to do it between 0 and 2 pi. So let's think about where tan is positive. First and third. So my solutions are 0 plus, pi plus, 2 pi plus, 3 pi plus. So in reality, it's just going to be pi, some k pi, plus whatever the angle happens to be. So there's one way, I guess, of coming up with my general formula, that is that k pi plus tan inverse of whatever the value is we're looking at. So in our case, so that's going to give us what? What's that going to give us? So our angle in this case is x on 2, and it's going to be equal to some k pi plus or tan inverse of negative 1 on root 3. So that means we're going to end up with a negative value there. So tan inverse of negative 1 on root 3, if we check that out, um, it's going to be negative of, and 1 on root 3 gives me a pi on 6. So we get negative pi on 6. So that means we'll be able to write our, um, our formula as k pi. So some k times pi minus pi on 6. get there eventually. Uh, so we can sort of tidy that up a little bit now. So x on 2 will be equal to take pi on 6 out the front and we get a 6k minus 1. Multiply by 2 across so I'll end up with an x uh, uh, equals pi on 3 times 6k minus 1. Okay, so what have we got here, boys? Read the range of h. So the range is obviously tied to our amplitude. So the normal sine graph is from 1 to negative 1. So my range is going to be negative root 2 
to root 2. Oops. Close bracket for both. Solve the equation h of x equal to negative 1. So we've got root 2 sine 2x equals negative, negative 1. So we'll get uh, sine 2x equals negative 1 on root 2. So the angle we're looking for is going to negative pi on 4. Now, we're going to keep the negative sign in that answer because um, we're looking for x as an element of r, so we're looking for a general solution General solution here. Let's just give us a bit more space. So what are my two possibilities? It means that 2x is equal to, well, it's the even pi plus the angle, which is negative pi on 4, or it's the odd pi minus the angle. Yeah, so let's tidy up. We'll get 2x is equal to, let's go with uh, we got pi on 4 at the front, and that gives me an 8k minus 1. Over this side, let's just expand this bracket first. Plus pi on 4, so that makes it 5 on 4. So we'll get a pi on 4 at the front of 8k plus 5. Um, divide both sides by x now, 2 to get x equals, so x is equal to pi on 8, 8k minus 1. And divide by 2, we get pi on 8, 8k plus 5. So, problem done. Okay, so let's just check out question seven. So we've got our amplitude and period first things. Amplitude is equal to two. That's that one. Period is equal to two pi on two, which is pi, and it's a sine graph. So let's go pi, pi on 2, uh, halfway there, halfway there. So the graph would be, there's the standard graph there for sine, isn't it? Pi on 2, uh, halfway there, halfway there. Okay, so we now need to do a shift of pi on three, pi on three units to the right, all right? So let's just get the, so we've got pi on two and pi on three, so pi on six is common. So we're going two pi on six to the right, and pi on two is the same as three pi on six. So my original as equations for intercepts, three pi on six, 6 pi on 6, um, so that's 3 pi on 6, now the turning point's missing, didn't have to label turning points, that's not so crucial, negative 6 pi on 6, alright, so let's grab our green, so I'm going to shift everything to the right, uh, 2 pi on 6 units, so that's a negative. So where's pi on 6 going to be? So working just with our scale, 1 on 6, 2 on 6, 3 on 6, yeah? So that's why the scale is quite nice for us. So intercept there. It's going to go across to intercept there. Intercept there. Across to intercept there. Just 1, 2 intercept there. So I guess, which means my turning point's going to go across two squares. So it'll go to there. It's going to go to there. Yep. And that's going to go across two, which will be across to there. Across two, into there. Across
across two, so maybe over there. So let's just get the graph drawn um, of what we know. So we're there, we're there, we're there, we're there, and we're there. Yeah. So uh, if I come across to there, so our turning point, so turning point about there, so we're probably going to go a bit like that. So let's get our eraser. So we're going to stop at pi, which is about there. I'll have to work out that turning point. And actually, I think that must have to turn back up. So let's just tidy that up. I reckon that turning point there for that one is there. And it's just going to go a bit like that. So let's work out some endpoints. So if I put x equal to pi, I get 2 sine 2 times pi minus pi on 3, which is 2 pi on 3, which is 2 sine 4 pi on 3. So 4 pi on 3 we know is down there, so it's negative, which is what we expect. 2 sine of pi on 3. Sine of pi on 3 is root 3 on 2. So negative root 3. So that's going to be the point pi negative root 3. This one here will be the point uh, negative pi negative root 3. And I feel somewhat confident that that's going to be the point 0 negative root 3. What else do we need? Sketch the graph the functions of x below. Label axis intercepts. So I better label them. What do we know? Negative 6 plus 2. So it's negative 4 pi on 6. Negative pi on 6. 2 pi on 6. 5 pi on 6. So we've done that with endpoints coordinates. Boys, I'm going to get a bit lazy, but you shouldn't. 0, 0. 0, 0, so I've got coordinates, and let's just make it really clear that uh, that's the graph of f of x, okay? So maybe where I've got the red graph, because I've got the advantage of rubbing out, just do it in a really light pencil. Just in a really light pencil, and then once you've done your final graph and you're happy with it, maybe go over it in pen. So it really stands out. That's not bad. Let's get rid of that. All right. Job done.